Hello everyone, Carlos here. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about how to track network connections with Sysmon. Sysmon allows us to track both TCP and UDP connections from all processes on the system. Now, when we're doing this tracking, I have to be honest, there's going to be a lot of noise. So this is one of those that you don't want to enable and just leave it there. You want to be very targeted in terms of what you capture or what you exclude. And the main reason for this type of event is going to be threefold. We want to look for C2 channels. When an attacker lands in a system, one of the first things that he's actually going to be doing is just simply connecting back so he can control that implant or that rat that he has in your system so he's able to take actions. The other one is going to be lateral movement. He's going to do discovery in your network to see what other assets are in that network so they can connect to those and move to those hosts to keep looking for more data or just leverage that access to get further and further into the network until they can have full control. It all depends on what they're targeting as they're in your network. Now, the other one's going to be data exfiltration. Many times we're going to see attackers that they're not going to be able to exfiltrate data. They don't want to expose that command and control channel because there's going to be monitoring for it. It's all going to depend on the level of maturity of the target that they land in. And in those cases, they're going to use a side channel to do that. They're going to compress the data and then exfiltrate it out of the network using probably a storage service that somebody's providing or probably just connecting to a website and putting that there in case that that channel gets detected in the process, it doesn't point to their C2 command and control channel. So let's take a look at the fields that we have available to us when we work with this type of event. Sysmon is actually going to log all of this data with event ID number three. And we're going to be seeing that the data is broken down into three chunks. The main chunk is going to be the image information or the process that is actually making that connection. So we're going to have the process ID, the image, the process good, all of that information. And then we're going to have the protocol information also, which is going to be the source IP, the type of protocol it is. Is it using IPv6? Was the connection initiated or not? And then we're going to have the connection itself. What is the source and what is the destination and all of the information around that. Now, when we look at this information, we're going to also have the destination port name. That is something that I do not recommend that you use for your filtering because sometimes that information tends to be there and others it may not. Same thing for destination hostname. It's going to depend if you have DNS lookup enabled or not. You can actually control this by using a specific element inside of your configuration file, which is called DNS lookup. And you can set that one either to true or false, and it's then going to perform a reverse lookup for it. The main reason that I don't like destination hostname to be used for filters, at least outside of your network, is going to be that they're going to be pointing many times to content delivery networks or other services that may be load balanced or have a round robin across them. And when you do that reverse lookup, we're going to be getting different host names for those. And it also opens the door to a lot of false negatives. So I tend to avoid those as much as possible. So let's take a look at building a baseline. So here's my base configuration that I'm going to be using to capture what is going to be the normal behavior of a Windows system. First of all, I'm going looking for C2 channels. I'm going to be looking primarily, as I mentioned before, for web, DNS, and time protocol. Now, in the case of directory ports, which are going to be used to find and enumerate your entire network internally, primarily I'm going to focus on those that I know that most pen testers and other actors have been using. So we're looking here at LDAP, we're looking at LDAP-S, we're looking in addition to this, the global catalog ports, because if I decide to make my queries directly into the global catalog, it is actually going through a different port. Same thing if it is enabled for SSL. And then I'm looking for Kerberos specifically, which is another port that only LSAS should be using this. So 
I'm only using this as a baseline. Uh, I have been wrong before. There have been some applications, specifically .NET applications, and probably I've seen one or two job applications that have their own Kerberos stack. So I like to baseline those in a production environment. In addition to that, we have management protocols, which is going to be the typical ones for use for lateral movement, which are going to be RDP, WinRM, WinRMS, which is over SSL, FTP, SSH, Telnet, SMB, and RPC. Now, these are not the only protocols that you should be looking for. For example, if you're using printers, you would add your printer ports. If you're using a proxy, more than likely port 8443 is going to be different. In addition to that, if you have other networking devices that you're managing, more than likely, you'll also be using different port numbers to manage those. And I would include those in the configuration. I've already applied this configuration and rebooted this machine. So if I do get sysmon network connection events, I should have already several network connection events for this host as it is joined into a domain as actually typical Windows, sending a bunch of telemetry over to Microsoft. So let's send this out to outgrid view. So I have a better view of what traffic have I captured. And as I'm looking here, you can see I have background tasks, I have office looking for updates, the search app, app SVC host for the different services, Visual Studio Code communicating also to the outside. Also, I have other applications here. Let's take a look if we have any others. You'll probably see this uh, unknown process connecting either to Kerberos or to LDAP. So this is a normal one to see that we can actually ignore. Here we have LDAP. Here we can see that it's checking for if I'm registered into Azure AD or not. So directory reg command. That's the only one that should be actually performing uh, LDAP calls in my system, unless I'm using MMC for some management task or something like that. Here I have some additional ones. So probably one of the things I could do is I can just go over here, network connect. I can do select image destination port. And yeah, I think image and destination port should give me quite a nice baseline. So I'm going to then do a unique here. I'm going to test this, make sure I'm getting the proper information. So here I have all of the different applications and the different ports that they're connecting for in a Windows 10 system. Now, one of the things I would do is I would remove this guys after I created a rule. Here we can see a vision number. I would probably just cut this make it into an array and make sure that we have contains all. And this is a pretty basic one that we can use here. Now, if I go into Sysmon modular, for example, so let's go Sysmon modular network connections. You'll see that Olaf already has some very basic ones that we can use specifically for exclusion. You can use this kind of like a general example for your environment, but I rather that you build your own. That is what I typically do for customers is that we built one specifically for the customer. And then what I would do is I would just go over into the root here and I would just simply create this same type of folder structure where I have all of my different configurations for my environment. And I would use the merge sysmon XML PSN one file that Olaf created to merge all of those specifically for my environment. And I would do it per task. I'll put a link to the video that he did on this specific script that he wrote. I think that he can explain it a lot better than I can. But as you can see, it's just a very simple process to create this baseline. If I want to create the rules, I would just simply pipe this into convert to sysmon rule. And I would have my basic exclude that I would then just simply add at the end tune uh, to this already existing configuration. And I would just do a bit of tuning to minimize the number of rules, consolidate some of those. Uh, as I mentioned before, those that have version numbers in here would turn this into a an array or a collection, and then I would just simply contains all or those values. 
And as I mentioned, I would do this for operating system, then roles and also functions, specifically our own OUs, let's say developers, marketing department, all of those are going to have different applications are going to be contacting different ports. So as you can see, building that initial baseline is not that complicated. If you're using tools like PS Gumshoe and you're able to build those out uh, from an EVTX file. Now, my recommendation it is to create a baseline per role operating system. Uh, so let's say that we have Windows 22 and Windows 2019. So we create baselines for each one of those operating systems. And then we add other stuff, for example, per role, we have a CA, we have a domain controller, we have a file server, and you create those baselines for those and you merge them together. This is where tools like those that are available from Sysmon Modular, where you can create all of that set of rule sets in individual TXT files or XML files, and then have that script merge those in become very, very important. I'm going to include a link to a video from Olaf, the creator of Sysmon Modular, where he actually goes through how to use that script. And I think you guys are going to find that information very useful when you're trying to build baselines as big as you're going to be working with when you're tracking network connections. And I think you're going to be able to pull all of the value from that. So as you can see, if we track network connections, we're going to get quite a bit of value. Why? Because let's say, let's bring some examples here, some context to what we're talking about. Let's say that an attacker gets into the system and he sets a SOX proxy, and he then starts enumerating your network. He's going to be connecting to your domain controllers and doing LDAP queries. Uh, yeah, normally LDAP queries are performed by LSAS and SVC hosts in a regular Windows machine. Very rarely are they done by other processes uh, like Office applications. Same thing goes like users are not normally opening Explorer and creating a chair. So Explorer then connects to LDAP. So all of that stuff is going to look out of place when you look at times of instances of processes connecting to LDAP. Now, when it comes to Kerberos, well, that's a given. Only else has it talks Kerberos in a machine. So if you see Kerberos anywhere else, more than likely the attackers fit into that box. Sox proxy is one of those tools that you're going to notice a lot of people actually use. Now, when it comes to global catalog and LDAP also, one other technique that attackers like using is AD Explorer to do a snapshot of your AD to bring that over into Bloodhound using a Python script, and then they're able to look at path of attack in your network. Also, you're going to be looking at processes connecting to SMB. You're going to see processes connecting to SSH. You're going to see processes connecting across the network, trying to move laterally. And those oddballs are not part of that initial baseline. They're going to be standing out when you look at your logs and you're going to be able to track that type of behavior. And I think you're going to get a lot of value because specifically, if you're able to do those initial baselines, you're going for the meat and potatoes of most of the actors activity on your network, which is going to be their command and control channel and it's going to be their lateral movement across your network. So I really hope that you found this information useful and remember like and subscribe and see you in the next video.